Okay, we'll start the meeting of the uh, Whaley Select Board for February 28, 2018. Uh, first item is we'll go bypass the minutes of the meeting, the last meeting. Uh, next item, comments from the public. Anybody have anything to comment on? Okay. Next item is a public hearing on a vote to adopt layout of Gray Oak Lane, Eastwood Lane, and Francis Way. That's the one that has the letter from the planning board, right? Yes, we have so, a letter from the planning board. If you want a, a real quick summary of, of where we've been and where we're going, the select board received a request for the town to um, lay out three streets. One is Gray Oak Lane, Eastwood Lane, the other one is Francis Way, part of the Pine Plains, Pine Plains Estate um, subdivision. And we've gone through um, two of the steps so far. The first one was the select board voted its intention to lay out um, these streets as submitted. And that worked to ask the planning board to s their opinion as to whether um, it was in the best interest of the town to do so, and you have a letter from the planning board. Yeah. Um, and they are, I'll read it quickly. At a regularly scheduled meeting of January 30th, 2018, the board reviewed the street plan for Pine Plains Estate. We find that it conforms to Whitley subdivision regulations for public roads and recommends that the select board send the plan to town meeting for approval with the stipulation that acceptance by the town of the roads does not include acceptance of responsibility for stormwater management and culvert cleaning within the subdivision. Those responsibilities will continue to reside with the Lot Owners Association under the condition of the Planning Board's subdivision approval. Sincerely, Don Sluter, Chair of the Planning Board. Okay, why do they make this, the two stipulations? Well, that, that stipulation they're talking about was part of the original subdivision approval mm -hmm. and the Lot Owners Association slash Homeowners Association, because some of the lots aren't built on, the actual name is Lot Owners Association. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be responsible for cleaning the rain gardens and the stormwater system. It's basically comprised of rain gardens along the, sub the sides of the roads off the pavement. Um, there's a couple of catch basins on the entrance off a of Long Plain Road on both Eastwood Lane and Gray Oak Lane. Those at some point will need cleaning, you know, like any town catch basin. But they've been there, Gray Oak Lane has been there since 2010, and there's like two inches of sediment in the bottom. So, it was so it's not a... Who's responsible for cleaning them, the town? Or? No, the Lot Owners Association would do that. Yeah, that's all part of the stormwater system, and we just rewrote the uh, stormwater <clears throat> long-term pollution and control manual, so to speak, that the Lot Owners Association will be guided by, and I've been guided by throughout the process. It's fairly simple, um, but the Lot Owners will be responsible for doing that. And you know, up to date, we've had um, a local landscape company go in a couple of times a year and clean out the rain gardens of leaves and debris, branches, that type of thing, and uh, remulch when needed. It's all part of the maintenance of those areas. So, seems to be working since 2010. Mm. Okay. Is there any other part of town you happen to know where this kind of uh, situation, or is it? Um, uh, unique to the Pine Plains. I know there was various uh, water uh, issues that they talked about. I don't remember exactly from years ago at the various planning board hearings, but I'm remembering there were sort of worries about water issues, and maybe that's why you have these solutions in place. And is that what makes it have these stipulations where I don't think they're, they exist in other parts of town, unless you correct me and I'm mistaken that there's some other part of town where the owners take care of the culverts. I'm, I'm not aware of any other ones. Well, there's only one other subdivision, one is that uh, Michikansky yeah. Circle, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, the, whole, the whole, what they call LID, it's low impact development thing, mm -hmm. is kind of yeah. catching on. I mean, even down in Florida, they're doing the rain gardens along the edge of the road. Yeah. And basically what that does, it filters the road runoff prior to getting into the, yeah. the groundwater system. Yeah. So it's, 
across the, the U.S., I'm sure it's becoming more and more of a standard rather than digging out an oh. area and piping water to there to infiltrate or piping right. it to a pond or a river, that type yeah. of thing. So it just, this is a newer subdivision that this stuff is available. Maybe it wasn't when they did the Chikowski circle. Yeah, right. yeah that's Here's what I say. Just okay. kind of come into B, and it does make a lot of sense. You save a lot of trees, you know, which also you know, impact the storm water getting absorbed by the trees and natural surroundings and so forth. So it just makes sense and it works. Okay. Okay. And so you have no issue with these conditions? No, I no, don't. No. We've been over that with the planning board, like I say, we revised it. Initially there was it was written so during construction of the infrastructure, the roads and all that, we had to do it a little bit different. Mm. So fencing and all that now it's built out and working it's been inspected okay. by an independent engineer for the town so I think we're pretty much ready to go okay well I would move then that we vote to adopt the layout with the stipulations that uh, Brian just read out from the uh, from the um, planning board's letter to the select board okay I'll second that those in favor all right the only comment I'd make after this, Brian, is to get this mileage into the state for our public road mileage. And I don't know what the cutoff date is. I know on a, <clears throat> every June 1st they have to certify their public road mileage, so I don't know. Yeah, it adds, um, it's 42,250 no, 40, lineal feet, so less than a mile. Yeah. Still, it would, it would add, we would add, when you don't take that mileage limit, so. Yeah, every little half mile helps us. You know. Right, whenever you come to that, to, to make sure we get it in is the, the time schedule for the state. Well, just do a typo and say it's 42,000. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> But we probably have to wait till after the town meeting right. approval. So, so in, in terms of the process, that the next step in the process is that um, we would put an article on the, on the you know, town meeting warrant, or if we write up a special before that, um, and they're asking for acceptance uh, where the local legislative body votes to recognize and accept responsibility for the street layout adopted by the, by the select board. Um, okay. And the second step of that is we also need to acquire um, either an easement or fee interest in uh, the public way, the right of way here. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a separate vote on the town meeting warrant. Okay. So this process is just laying out the 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 bounds of the street as mm -hmm. as are shown here. Okay. We still need acceptance at town meeting by the local legislative body. So the residents and we need to acquire some type of real property interest in those. Okay. In the street. So okay. those kind of, kind of boilerplate. Like the language for that is probably already written and yes. So uh, extra things to vote on at town meeting. Yep. Who doesn't like that? We're adding to the list. Right. Okay. Okay, any other comments on that? No? Okay, moving on to uh, first appointment of Adelia, Adelia Bardwell on Town Hall Storage. I guess Adelia is not here. Uh, Brian, did you want to? Unfortunately, you couldn't come tonight. Um, so, the Historical Society is being proactive and thinking about the time when the Town Hall is finished and they move into the room. And at some point down the line, we asked them, maybe it's time to move out of the center school. And what are they going to do with all of their property that they have in that school? Um, and so they, she just wanted to get a sense of, a sense of the board and, and their willingness to, and I don't, I don't know that any additional investigation has been done to this, but whether, in, whether it would be possible to put some type of shed behind the town hall to store additional items. That's the request that I said I would relay onto, onto the board. Okay, uh, I have two, two concerns, uh, I guess. One is that the building is a non-conforming building and any changes to it or the property would need a special permit. Is that, would that apply in this case? I don't know if it would apply because we're not actually we're not actually modifying the the building itself or adding an, or an, an accessory building. 
Okay. Concerns about setbacks. Yeah, the other thing is and setbacks. Things yeah. like that yeah, would the, apply. And the property boundaries are pretty tight there. The property boundaries are very tight. <laughs> right. And, and I guess before this board decides on, on, on that, I guess I'd like to see what they're proposing, where, to, where they're going to yeah. put it on the property and the size of the building because with the setbacks, you have 20 feet all the way around the back and there's a, uh, I would call it a storm tank uh, for, store, for, no, for the septic tank, a septic t uh, Leach leaching, tank. leaching pit, it's called, adjacent to where the town, that highway, that garage was, the barn was there. So you can put it on that and, and the area where the barn was is all within, well, 90% of it is within the 20 feet offset. So you don't have room there, so you're going to put it, the only available space is south of that, which is going to be in the view of the stair tower that we're putting nice tall windows in to get a view of the valley. So instead of view of the valley, you're going to have a view of a shed. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like a little more information. Yeah, we need more information. It sounds like, I mean, I'm not against it in principle or anything, but yeah. it, I think the devil's in the details here, probably, so if we can yeah. find out more. Um, and, and there's no other storage options that would be big enough within the well, building. Within, That's within the, the other. No, not within the building. I, I think that, doesn't the, is it they or the town owned the building next to the cemetery? The, the yellow barn, do you? Uh, the town know? took control of it for uh, yeah. insurance purposes. It was donated to the Historical Society right. okay. by, uh, by the Wake Estate. Okay. So they own that building, I, I guess. They are, yeah. or the town. I'm not sure who the actual title is, but. I believe the town of Whaley owns that. Yeah. And I think they are, storing, they are storing stuff in there today already. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah it, would, it would be nice if they could store stuff closer to the town hall, but I don't know if there's physically room. Yeah. To do it. Yeah, so we're sympathetic. I think we're sympathetic to their need for yeah. more storage. I'm not sure if a shed is the right thing, but we're willing to keep talking about it. We could write on the center school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it is rubble. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we'll find out. Yeah, more I mean, that, that seems like it's reasonable to try and get more information on what they really would, would want yeah. to do. And knowing that, I mean, they would have to go yeah. before the planning board if perhaps. For a special permit, although maybe that's not the case, but they, you know, depend on the size, likely. Yeah. Yeah. Accessory buildings under a certain size. I don't know if it was 200 square feet. Yeah. I believe. Um, don't don't. Um, depending on the town. Don't trigger the building right. code. Yeah. Well, and they would need a building. They need a building permit though. So the building is under if it's small enough, feet, they would. You don't. Depending on your town, this town may require one, but so two hundred or a hundred. No, I had to get one for my two. my shed. If it's so do I understand? It? No, if it's under a hundred, you don't need it. If it's under two hundred, you can get a permit and submit minimum details. If it's over two hundred, you need a, a certified drawing of the building to get approved. There, there are some differences there, but the building inspector will know right. as yeah. the setbacks. Yep. before he approves it for whatever size they're looking yeah. for. But. Yeah. I also have a concern. I also have some some neighborly concerns yeah. Um, yeah. As, to, as to the impact on the butters as well. So mm -hmm. I think we'll do some more investigation and but we won't rule it out entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Old Town Business. Town hall update uh, and discussion. Uh, windows are in, right? <coughs> yeah. The windows are in. Uh, working on the floor still and in, uh, in the hallway, I guess. Uh, plumbing is in. Well, the rough plumbing is in, and the electrical people are there putting electric in. Uh, no one else. That's about it for the last the last two weeks. Yeah, most of the mechanical stuff is being worked on now, right? right? Mechanical, right. So, okay, moving on. Uh, Smith APR. We need to execute documents. 
in there. Yep, this is going to look familiar from the last, or from the last meeting in it, meeting before that, I believe. Is it just Fred? Um, this is, I believe it's both of you. Okay. <coughs> and this is for the, the documents for the Smith APR. And that is located between Christian Lane and River Road. I'm sorry, Long Plain Road and River Road. Right, that's what the map shows. In Christian Lane, it's kind of on the And this map too. Corner right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are just documents that allows the okay. the APR to for the real estate closing to take place for the APR. And again, the town is a the town is a co-holder of the restriction. Mm -hmm. In reality, uh, the state is the is the primary holder, so it would take the state to fall apart for the town to really assume any responsibility for that. And if that's the case, we have bigger issues than <laughs> than the uh, than the Smith APR. Than the Smith APR. Yeah. Okay. Moving okay. on. The Smike's House lease agreement. This is agreement between the Waitley Affordable Housing Trust and the Town of Waitley regarding use of Community Preservation Act funds. Well, this one. No, it's not really a Smike's House. Well, the Smike's House one's a little bit different. Oh, I the, moved the, ahead. Okay. Okay. The Smike's House okay, is. Smikes, okay. This is the agreement that Franklin County Regional Housing Authority presented to us. Right. Just yeah. before the holidays, and yeah. we had seen it um, really yeah. for the first time. And what the board, the action the board had taken at that time was to um, ask the housing committee <coughs> for input on the agreement. And through, I guess, some instances of battle, the housing committee wasn't able to meet until last week mm -hmm. to discuss it. And um, they recommended some. Um, some changes, and I've shipped those off to uh, the Regional Housing Authority. I was hoping to have an agreement back that, mm -hmm. that they were okay with, but I haven't received it back yet, so okay. um, we can um, <coughs> Okay, so that, that might off. be for the next meeting? Next I meeting. hope so. Okay. Okay, the new business was the agreement, or a CPA grant agreement with the way of the Affordable Housing Trust. Yeah, um, th and this one seems pretty straightforward. There's one place where I think they have the word and and it should be or. Yep. Um, on uh, number two, under the now therefore number two, um, it seems like and isn't the right thing. It shouldn't be a single transaction exceeding $5,000 and total, because that wouldn't be a single transaction if it totals 10000 or more for multiple expenditures. And so the word make it makes more sense if that's an or, or yeah. but yeah. Uh, the, I know the people who, who did this are pretty careful, and I'm willing to hear any explanation of why it's and instead of or. But it sounds like that might that one might just be a typo. Yeah. I believe it is. And the other comment was that uh, number eleven. Um, I mean, most of the purpose of this seems to be that everybody involved is aware of the restrictions that the state law puts on use of CPA funds. That seems to be the main purpose. Right. Um, and uh, number 11 is seems like it's just, um, that may, it doesn't refer to the law, so I'm not sure it's part of the, the actual law, but it sounds like it's just another layer of, of oversight that CPC and Select Board and Housing Trust are all kind of in the loop. So when there's, if there's some, um, uh, you know, some some reason to think something is amiss, then it would come to the select board, um, and that's that's our job oversight. So I don't really have any problem with it, but it just it, that that seems to be like one of the only things that's not specified in the law that that this would be here. It doesn't seem to be uh, it's not over encumbering. I don't think no. to have us have an oversight on that particular kind of occasion. So. I, I think it. I think you're correct, and I think it's also there if the funds 
sit for a long period of time a mechanism for yeah there's a mechanism them to, come back. to get that yeah. <clears throat> okay. so, so um, we, we, we i think with that particular with a little and or amendment mm -hmm. um i'm okay with uh, approving this um for you know for the for the, for the housing yeah. No, the, the blanks on the front, that's already been approved at town meeting, right? Yep, I have the two. Right. And I have the two. Yeah. So there's two actual transactions where those are filled in. Right. Where, okay. um, that Brian wants us to sign. Okay. And since we're signing on the back, he says he'll go in and change it to more. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> on the front. Do we have more articles that warrants to sign? Okay, I just. Oh. <laughs> we usually do that. So like, get in line. We got more things to sign here. Okay. Hey, isn't there a liquor license we can sign too? Or? Uh, yeah. Soon, <laughs> next meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, the quant quant is. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're due for their seasonal, aren't they? They've got the paperwork on the straight to get it back from them. Okay. Okay. Okay, next item is. Affordable Care Act, uh, effect on part-time positions. Right. So it was, it was brought to my attention that the Affordable Care Act and Mass General Law Chapter 32B have different standards for when benefits need to be offered to employees. Affordable Care Act says if you work more than 30 hours, 30 hours or more, you required, an employer is required to provide benefits to employees. Mass General Chapter 32B says 20 hours or more. Our personnel policy says 20 hours or more. Regularly scheduled work. And what was happening was we had, um, it was mostly one part-time position that was regularly working more than those hours. So there was a, an initial discussion about, should we make the position, should we try to see if it made sense to make the position benefited or should we try to find more part-time employees to you know fill those shifts and the personnel committee discussed it the other um, last week <laughs> and felt like that it should you know be an issue that would be talked about with the select board because it, it implicates other things in, in addition yeah. to benefits yeah. and um, at this point it seems like the, the most effective the most effective path to take and in, in talking with um, with the department head is I it just seems uh, a better course of action to see if we can find more people to fill those shifts instead of trying to, to go for a benefited position, which I'm talking about, we all know mm -hmm. health insurance continues to climb. Um, yeah. So maybe a significant increase. And pay retirement. And so at this time, anyways. At this time, it seems like the first step should be right. see if we can get more people to fill shifts. Okay. Um, it would just. I'm gonna, if, if the police chief is okay with that, then I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good thing to do. Yeah, do it that way first. Yeah. Um, See what comes out. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. Town administrator updates. So the request for proposals from Frontier for the East Whateley School, the Blue School, was released today, and the town released its a request for proposals for the adjacent lot. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is interested in owning a circa 1915, 13 mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. um, please contact Patty Cavanaugh or myself and we can put you in, um, the driver's put seat. you in touch with, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the request for proposal documents. And proposals for Proposals for both properties will be due on April 3rd. Ours will be due at noon, and I believe the Frontier proposals are due by 11 a.m. Again, the idea is oh, yeah. the idea is that that for the I think from the town's point of view, at least in my opinion, is if we can provide some value or have a better project come out of whatever happens with the Blue School, it gives us the opportunity to look at selling that lot, subject to town meeting approval. But it at least it allows everything to happen at once if yeah. if that's desired. If it doesn't add any benefit to the project, 
then I think we got to think about whether it's mm -hmm. worth hanging on to it for, for future use. But it at least creates that opportunity yeah. for something good to happen there. Does the town have to, all the towns have to vote on the blue school or the school committee does that? The school committee would do that. You, you recall that the town still maintains a right of first refusal mm -hmm. on the East Whateley School. So at some point, hypothetically, if someone came to, to Frontier and submitted a proposal mm -hmm. and said, we'll buy it for $5,000, Frontier needs to come to the town of Waitley and say, town of Waitley, we'd like to buy it for $5,000, you have 90 days to let us know. Oh, okay. So yeah. we still have an element of control over what happens there, which I think is good because it's a fairly residential. It is a residential agricultural neighborhood there. Yeah. It's not fairly, it is. So <laughs> it's important to... I have an idea of what's going to go in there. Granted, this, the zoning is fairly restrictive as to what also what could go in there, but um, we'll have a better idea. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that on what you gave us copies of our proposal as more pages in the back. Is that similar with theirs? You just didn't make copies, or is this all they have? I have included more. Yeah, you put okay documentation so, in ours. Okay, so theirs includes some of this as well. Or uh, no, ours has more. Oh, okay. But we don't have more specifications or things like that. No, we I just have more. I just think it's prudent, and you want to make it as easy as possible for yeah. people to research the property. And right. so ours includes the deeds. Right. Um, it includes maps. It includes a, a template purchase and sale agreement from yeah, town council. Yeah, yeah. Right. I like to have all of those items there so that it's easier for somebody. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So ours is basically better than theirs. Well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> I won't deny that. But they will require all these forms to fill out probably anyway, yeah. right? When they or, or they would want to research that stuff and find right. it, so. The forms are, the, the, the forms are standard. Right, the, so they're aware, okay. The tax certification, the price proposal form is pretty much standard yeah. um, non-collusion form those are standard forms that no, somebody no needs to fill out who are we not colluding with uh, the, pro <laughs> the proposer is not colluding with anybody oh okay all right and so potentially we could just sell the land and the school could go unsold yeah. we have the town of Whaley can do whatever it would like with its property yep yeah. and in theory frontier could do whatever it likes with its property subject to the town's right of first refusal to say we don't think that's a good idea we'll buy it, we'll buy it instead right yeah. again these par both these parcels have cross easements on them ours yeah. has the septic system and there's actually a brook in the, the upper right hand corner so now we're talking about uh, if we don't think the school is a good deal do we have to buy it if if we exercise that 90 day yes then we have to buy our it. option is to buy it or we get out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we would own it if there is no proposals. We so still we only if we want to exercise the option. Option, but if we don't, then it still goes Stay back to Frontier's school. property. Right. Yeah. And if we don't get any, if if nothing happens with it, again, we'll have to enter into a conversation with Frontier about about what's best for that neighborhood. Yeah. Not necessarily from a from a purely financial standpoint, but from a mm. neighborhood, community, town standpoint as to yeah. we don't want to see a, a building fall into disrepair. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, moving on, you have anything else? Updates? So in, in terms of health insurance and in an entire process. I, I had an initial meeting with, with Emily Tynan. She's a Union 38 representative for Frontier. Well, for Front Union 38. And so, so the Waitley employees. I also had a, uh, a conversation with town council who suggested that we may not have to go through that 32B process after all. Which oh. would be nice. It, so long as in because we have a single union that we're negotiating with, uh -huh. 32B, the 32B process is really set up for when you have multiple unions and you need to come to an agreement about, about essentially the mitigation plan. 
So, so if you have a if you have a police union, a highway union, school union, it creates a process from which everyone's forced together. And, and but we don't have to do schedule. both Frontier and Union Thirty Eight, which are right. different unions. We only have to right. do Union Thirty Eight. So what his advice to me was: Eleven. Let's just. Why don't you see if you can just come to an agreement with the union? Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a signed agreement. They don't have to go, you don't have to form your insurance advisory committee, send out notifications, and then form your public employees committee, send out notifications. And mm. There's different timelines associated with those. It's, it would be a lot nicer. Less work. Yes. And same result. Yes. Uh, I mean, the result, it's strange because the result of the process is pretty much, we pretty much know what we the know result what is going to be. We need to share 25% of our savings. Savings. Savings, our, our paper savings, um, with, um, in this case, the law says subscribers. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is one question, and, and that is, um, the, according to the town council, the law says subscribers, so to me that would mean all of our subscribers. The um, I'm individual not sure, people. Yeah, I'm not sure if, it, if, I'm gonna, if we're going to get any pushback about if we're gonna, are we talk? Are they gonna be thinking union subscribers or subscribers across the board? Um, I would like to think in terms of equity. It would make sense to, to do it across the board because the changes affect everybody. So, yeah. um, but we'll, we'll see. I know she wanted to go back and talk with their yeah. field representative about. Um, our meeting today, but uh, I'm hopeful it can be over oh, quickly. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed on that. I know it's not a bad thing for, I, I believe she has to deal with four of the towns, so mm -hmm. it would lighten their load as well. So that's a benefit. But. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, Williamsburg Road Bridge is still in design, still in the design phase. Um, same with um, Haydenville Road. Mm -hmm. uh, those are still moving forward, although we don't really hear much about them, but um, that, that process is still taking place. Um, Complete Streets Committee is still, um, still moving forward with the FERCOG, uh, the FERCOG Transportation Planners. They're going to be presenting uh, the draft prioritization list of, of projects for the, for the committee to review. It's next week or oh, it might be two weeks. Mm. And again, that's a listing of, of complete streets projects. Um, that is a requirement for the town to complete the prioritization plan before we're eligible for. Mm. Last I knew it was up to $400,000 in construction mm. funding. Oh. So, but as more <coughs> towns reach the complete, you know, as, as more towns more reach yeah, yeah. tier two and they complete their plans, there's gonna be more competition for the funds. Yeah. Right. Well, let's get it done then. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's moving forward. Um, and same with the uh, the veterans project in the center of town, with the vet the veterans monument there. As you recall, we res we received the, the three thousand dollar grant from the yeah. state historical records advisory board. Thank you. And we'll be meeting with with that that really ad hoc committee. Uh, hopefully next week. And. Um, the hope is is that um, we'll be able to investigate some landscape architects and you know, get an existing condition survey done, preliminary design done, um, put that out for public comment, and based on public comment, have a final design with cost estimates as to um, a potential, uh, hopefully, potential CPA project with maybe some other additional grant funds, some in kind. We always like in kind. Yes. Labor, yes. So. Yeah. Other than that, it's budget season, so mm, yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We had a nice little meeting last night, so yeah. And so the um, frontier budget meeting has been scheduled for Tuesday, um, March sixth, Mar March sixth of the Tuesday, I believe. So the budget Tuesday, March 6th. What's that? 
Frontier. You said Frontier. Did, last night was not Frontiers? It's the, the school committee public hearing. Oh, the public hearing for the school committee. Okay. Right, six, um, yeah, right, six, yeah, we, so that's for Frontier. That. And Waitley, the Waitley School Committee public hearing is March 12th. Okay. And that's when the full time. The 6th is a budget. We have our budget meeting on the 6th. Yeah. Our next budget. Great. So we are meeting here with the Finance Committee at 6 on Tuesday, the 6th. So we won't be at Frontier's Frontier. budget hearing. Right. In all likelihood. Right. Um, and then you said Monday the 12th. Yeah. Well, I won't be at this. I won't be at the school's hearing because maybe 250 at this meeting okay. and I'm on that board. So maybe uh, if, if somebody else can be there, that would be that would be good. Maybe maybe even John. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Sign. I'd like to assign John to <laughs> attend the school committee uh, budget hearing on Monday the 12th. Okay, well, John's going to be our representative to the upcoming uh, contract to date the uh, discussions with the school. They had said that we. I don't think that's happened yet. Okay. That's, yeah, that hasn't been discussed yet. Apparently, we didn't have a representative last time they were saying. Well, I don't know, they, they did. I was the rep. I was there. No, we, we did. They're talking to the union. Was it the union contracts for the, the three years? Yeah. No, we've yeah. had select board on that. I know, yeah, you were last time I was, I, yeah, and it was like two, two, two and two and a half years ago. And then I so was it was like the, my last year, last time around. Yeah. Um, and I remember being at the meetings with Bob Holland and okay. being the select board's representative. That was, so that's, uh, that was, that was a little confusing last night, yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 But after you were, you were on it, then I was on it after, after that, yeah. for the first year or two, and I don't know who, who is it. We haven't met the last well, year. Well, yeah. Guess, well, so. yeah. I think it's very cyclic. It's like so, in there, every yeah. three, three years will be a right. year where you have a lot of meetings, right. and then you have two years with almost none. Right. So this upcoming nineteen will be the last year of the contract. Fiscal year nineteen will be the. So during fiscal year nineteen is when we will negotiate for the next one. So probably this coming year will be the one where that position will have more more meetings to go to. Yeah. Right. And was there any, did I miss last night the discussion of the new phone systems at the elementary school? Did that come up? No. Not specifically, no, I, I don't remember. I need to follow last, up. Last I knew that has not been done. Right. I meant to bring it up and I forgot. That was voted last year this time. It still hasn't happened. Yep. And it was a safety issue then. We had a debate on the floor here between the fire chief and the school committee on yeah. whose lives are more important. Yeah. And they still haven't put the system in. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it for tonight. Yeah, okay, our next meeting is, is March 14th at 6 o'clock. Okay, I move that we adjourn. A second. In favor? Aye. Aye.